All right, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, wow. Okay, well maybe we'll just skip the agenda. Um, uh, the, the, the background, uh, the, well this is our scope. Uh, we're just going to do, uh, originally we're going to look at network uh, PCAP dumps of you know the video game systems, Xbox, PS3, Wii, uh, both server side and PS3. Uh, then we're going to look at the, the hard disk um, of all these different systems. A oh, little closer. Everybody hear me fine? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> About me, my name is Brandon Nesbitt. I'm a security consultant with uh, with Trustwave. I'm a member of their incident response team. Uh, do credit card data breach investigations. I've got a little bit of experience, and uh, I like beer. <clears throat> the goal here uh, is to take an in-depth uh, forensic look of common video game systems, uh, how they're played. Uh, well, not how they're played, but. Uh, Looking for game-related data that may assist or may aid a forensics investigator in a, you know, a compromise investigation. A little note here about consoles. Uh, traditionally, you know, I don't think consoles have really been looked at uh, forensically, really seriously, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but anymore, with these seventh-generation consoles, the PS3, the 360, the Wii, they're all trying to really be the centerpiece of your living room. Maybe, maybe not so much the Wii, but. You know, both the PS3 and the 360, uh, they have, I mean, they do everything. You can stream media, you can, you know, play Netflix, you can play games, you can play Blu-rays, uh, all this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not, <clears throat> it, it could provide a lot if you're doing like a forensic investigation. Um, with regard to the type of, uh, type of media, any type of internet browsing, uh, <laughs> the internet browsing, uh, save game stuff, uh, and we'll get into that in a bit. Um, so first a little bit of background. Originally my idea to do this was I was going to do uh, just try to look for personal information, sensitive information. I do credit card data breaches so I was like hey, you know, you can buy stuff through these consoles. Uh, perhaps, you know, I can find credit card numbers stored in these things or usernames, passwords, all that fun stuff. So <clears throat> as that kind of, as I discovered that was going to become more of a, a fool's errand, uh, really went, went back to a case that I worked on about a year ago <clears throat> in which uh, uh, there was a credit card data breach and uh, on this system, on this back of house system, there was a uh, C-Strike folder, you know, for Counter-Strike. Old version, C-Strike 1.6 um, and it was a default kind of a package install. Uh, in this install uh, they had admin mod uh, installed with 1.6 and, you know, as you can see here we have a player's log. All the players that connected to this system that was compromised, you know, credit card de credit card numbers were being stolen, um, and we also had this game server, and we had these IP addresses and these names of people who were connecting to this system at the time. Now, were they the ones who were doing the investigation or doing the compromise? Yeah, probably not. I mean, but the IP addresses that were on here, you know, we were able to trace them back. You know, using a normal geo IP uh, locate, you could go and see that they were originated in Russia. You could search their names and you could find their little Steam ID community page, which we'll discuss in a bit, um, and all kinds of information. So it kind of got me thinking. Um, and before I continue, a quick note on IP addresses and, and logs. Uh, typically, IP addresses in a forensics investigation is more or less, more or less moot, really, because I mean, there's really no way for you to guarantee that source. Because, matter of fact, we know everybody on the internet is behind seven proxies. <coughs> and so, but on a video game system, I mean, why would an IP address be a little bit more relevant than let's say, you know, a security event log? Well, I mean, if you're trying to play a video game through Tor, I mean, what's, what's going to happen? You're going to have a very high ping. Some might say over 9,000. And I'm sorry, that's, <laughs> this is my last name, I promise. All right. <laughs> a quick note on our methodology. We want to keep uh, warranty voiding to a minimum uh, because, you know, sure we could take a PS3, you know, we could take an old one, we could rip it up, up we could install a mod chip and we can try to get access to the hypervisor or, uh, you know, the NAND storage. But that's really kind of outside of a traditional forensics investigation. We really want to keep the tampering to a minimum. But there does exist several challenges uh, with proprietary hardware, uh, custom stuff. There is absolutely no, there's really no uh, scientific documentation on any of these consoles uh, or the software platforms really. Uh, the only stuff that you're really going to find with regard to documentation is going to be stuff that the hacker community's done. Um, 
and PC server stuff that was acquired using standard forensic, you know, best practices for acquisition. Scope, just real briefly, uh, again, we're doing network forensics, traditional disk analysis, and these are the systems we looked at. Again, obviously, you know, this is just a very small piece of, you know, all the games that are out there and available for people to play, but uh, just try to hit on the big ones. So, first, we're going to break down the PCAPs. How I did this was uh, on my home network, I just set up an art poison, uh, fired up the Wii, the PS3, uh, had a friend bring over his 360, uh, and just captured and see what we could find. There are some very, all, all, all console systems, you have multiple ways to connect. Um, I think the Wii is only wireless. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I know the PS3 and the 360, you have wired, wireless, uh, there's Bluetooth, all that fun stuff. Um, and you're going to see some common themes as we just kind of briefly go through the PCAP breakdown. Uh, there's a lot of UDP. I mean, you don't need a stateful connection to play a game. Uh, all the important stuff, which this is really surprising, well, maybe not so much, but all the really important stuff, if you go through like Xbox Live Marketplace, the PlayStation Store Online, uh, all this is done over SSL TLS. Uh, so it's all, you can browse safely, you can buy safely, it's encrypted. Uh, but web browsing, like if you browse the marketplace or the PlayStation store, it's all typically just like HTTP. So if you were to do a PCAP analysis, uh, you're going to see the same kind of stuff that you would see if you were just, you know, an analyzing a PCAP dump from a normal PC. So first the 360, uh, Xbox Live Marketplace, it's really built on XML, no surprise there. Um, again, it's identical to other PC traffic that you might see, and you can parse the data from the PCAP, you can extract stuff, you can use something like Foremost or, or Network Miner, and you could really just pull out uh, images, files, you know, whatever's getting browsed through. And so here's a, a sample of an XML page that you'd see if you were to, you know, do some PCAP analysis. Uh, here we can see uh, the first two, the first thing to really note that's highlighted is the unique ID for the game. Uh, I'll elaborate on that when we get to the hard drive analysis. Um, and then there's a cost and points. They have a point system when you buy on the Xbox Live. Um, you, you don't just, you know, give a credit card number and buy stuff. You have to buy points and then spend the points to, to get what you want. And again, you know, just like any other uh, PCAP dump, you're going to get images that you can extract. Um, and yeah. And important stuff, I actually had a friend, uh, that previous screen that was for Magic the Gathering, I think, I actually had the guy buy it, um, and this is the traffic that you'd see. It's all SSL, TLS. So, <clears throat> the next one is Wii. Again, everything's done over SSL. Uh, the, the, the one thing that really note though, if the Wii, even in standby mode, even when you turn it off, it's still broadcasting. It's still going to broadcast out like over some sort of DNS, um, and that's a result of Wii Connect 24, and that's the website to look for there. And fun fact, well, not really a fun fact, but because uh, you can do Netflix browsing on you know the Wii 360 PS3 anymore, um, you can, you know, it's done over normal SSL. Authentication's done. Oh, sorry, authentication's done over SSL, but everything else is like HTTP stuff. So if you happen to you know be breaking down. <coughs> Rebreaking that, you can see somebody's Netflix queue, and as you can tell, this individual really doesn't have good taste in movies at all. A PS3 browser, um, they kind of have a custom browser, which is really interesting. Um, like Network Miner, I have a screenshot there. It does a really good job of kind of uh, of identifying it. Um, but you know, if you have logs and you see this PS3 application lib HTTP, uh, that means you got yourself a uh, you know, a PS3 on that network. Uh, the one thing that you, that, that might be useful for a forensic investigation with regard to uh, PCAP analysis of a P, uh, PS3 is the buddy list. That is done over XSL. Um, so here we have a link down at the bottom, has an avatar. Uh, online name, that would be the person's name. I've obviously obfuscated it uh, to protect, you know, the quote unquote gamer. Um, and so yeah, and here we have a, a, an, an image for the profile. And yes, that is an active image. So there's our, our gamer. So moving on, so that pretty much it for PCAP analysis. Um, there's, there's again all the important stuff, all the really good stuff that you know you you know you you would want to get. Uh, it's done over SSL. But with regard to forensic investigation, if you do have a PCAP dump, uh, it really would not hurt to go through because you can get a good idea. Because like I said normal web browsing traffic is going to be uh, like standard, like you would from any other internet browser. First hard drive we rip apart is the 360. Um, all about the 360. The only thing to really note here is the last bullet with proprietary storage. Uh, they only allow authorized storage devices, which is a, um, if you're following along on the, well, in the, the PDF, I actually show how to break it apart, but it's a plastic encased, it's a standard two and a half inch uh, laptop hard drive. Now, 
if you don't have an Xbox 360 and you want to get a drive to kind of do this on your own, all you got to do is ask. Um, <laughs> Xbox 360s are notorious for the red ring of death. Uh, I, I'm sure anybody who has one, anybody who kind of follows the scene is aware of the red ring of death. Um, so you know all I did was put a quick ad up on Craigslist, hey I'm looking for a 360 for parts, uh, I need the hard drive. And I got about 20 people saying hey you know do you want more than one? So <laughs> and as we'll see uh, you really should uh, wipe that before you, uh, you try to sell it. Again, taking it apart, it uses uh, it uses uh, authorized storage. Uh, take apart the drive at your own risk. Uh, if you were to take out the, uh, take apart the hard drive, you're going to avoid the warranty. There's a little Microsoft Hollow sticker, um, and yeah, once you do that, you're not going to get your warranty on it. Uh, once the drive is removed, you can just use your favorite acquisition method. I I would recommend doing a DD because that way it gives you a lot more options to use some of these third-party apps to load up the image. What's on the disk? You're going to have three partitions that are formatted FATX. You have partition zero, which as far as I know it's really just system information. Uh, partition two, you're going to have le uh, legacy backward uh, compatibility, so meaning like original Xbox games that you can play on the 360, all that information is going to be stored there. And with partition three, game saves, content, and cache. Um, I do have a link there uh, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, also, if anybody is storing uh, like media, pictures, music, movies, or anything like that, it is going to be in this directory. <clears throat> so for the 360, uh, I've highlighted the first three things. Uh, those are represent profile IDs. So here we can see for the system there were three separate profiles that were used for the system. And you can break it down even further. Using that website, uh, we could tell that this person had played uh, Modern Warfare. Uh, and here we have a game save starting, you know, November 22nd, 2005 at 12:59 p.m. So here we have kind of a timestamp. Here we can say, hey, at this particular point in time, somebody on the system was in fact playing um, a 360. Now, <clears throat> as far as I do note the Mindex directory, that's where you know, your music's gonna be stored. Again, you can find pictures. Um, now. <clears throat> This would be useful more along the lines of I guess you could say kind of like a criminal investigation if more, more or less if you were do like a, doing like a kitty porn case. Uh, images are going to be stored there. You're going to be able to find it. You can just parse it out. Uh, it's really, really simple. You can use tools like Foremost or any other forensic uh, file carving utility to do this. Again, kind of locating the inform information. Most game specific information is going to be in partition three. Really what to look for uh, is just some, some bullets just kind of reiterating what I already said. What, what can you find? Well, you know, obviously you can find the games that were played on the system. You can determine when they were played, uh, at what times, when was the save generated. Um, you're going to find gamer tags. You know, who, who are on this person's buddy list? And gamer tags, you can, it's public information. You can simply look it up um, and get this information. Um, and again, media stored, music, movies, pictures, um, and again, like foremost, all that stuff will work quite well. And here's just a screenshot of foremost doing its thing. And here's some screenshots of the kind of stuff you're going to find. Here we have pictures uh, of you know the avatar. Uh, the one in the top right is you know our gamer of that system. Um, on the bottom left, here we have movies. Those are mostly advertisements for Xbox Live Marketplace. Um, and then the rest is pictures. <coughs> Drive analysis. Uh, you can view uh, live files in unallocated space. Uh, viewing the live files is going to require a bit of a third-party utility, something like Explorer 360 or, or WinX HDD. Or if you have like the effort, uh, if you or if you want to put forth the effort, you can do some kernel modifications and just mount it into Linux. Um, some of the file thing, some of the file types that are easily identifiable. Again, there's no scientific documentation on this stuff, so there's really no way to you know confirm it. But you know we could make a good guess. Uh, SU system update, title update, and FM friend manager, I, I presume. Here we have a screenshot. I've blurred it all out, but it's just a list of gamer tags. Again, you know you could look it up. You can validate. You can say, oh, these are this person's friends. Quickly wrapping it up, uh, FatX is the same you know file system type or, or partition type that was used in the Xbox One. So there's a lot of utilities to go through and parse it. Uh, there's it's the same kind of stuff you would find on any other PC. Uh, you can generate time frames based on saved data, uh, just doing kind of a, a live uh, file system analysis. OS and other sense of information is really closely guarded. Um, but again, no no real scientific documentation. Um, if 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 you're going to do like an investigation, really the best thing to do outside of you know taking the hard drive and engine is really just to turn it on. I mean, you could browse the pictures through there, you can browse their music, and if they are using this thing to you know store you know child pornography or whatnot, it's going to be right there. Um, 
And if you want to rip out the hard drive and scan